Hello there. Um, nine days short of two years. Okay, I've got my CT results. <clears throat> uh, it took place on Tuesday. Today's Friday. We only got them this afternoon. And there's a pre-story to this. Um, I had my oncologist appointment this morning at 8 o'clock. And we looked all day yesterday on my portal, waiting and waiting and waiting to find the results of my CT scan, which never came. And so when I woke up this morning and I'm, I said to Matthew, you know, we, we looked up until, you know, last night and there were still no results, you know, are we going to get to the oncologist appointment and he's not going to have any results to tell us. It's like, okay, whatever. And I might add, neither of us slept well. We both slept like under five hours, which is really interesting. You know, like mine was four hours and 47 minutes and his was like four hours and 43 minutes. Very strange. We sleep in different bedrooms. Very interesting. So we were both on the same like wavelength. Um, so we get to the oncologist appointment <clears throat> and he's a little irritated because he wasn't getting, he, he didn't have the information. And so he literally had to call the radiation or the, uh, the CT scan place and get the information directly from the doctor or so. And he starts telling us, you know, things haven't really changed much. And, and um, it doesn't make any sense that you have the pain that you have. Uh, it just doesn't correlate with having, you know, cancer. Okay, but I have a lot of pain. And he proceeds to tell us, you know, well, no, it says right here, you know, it, it really hasn't changed any. So uh, we believe that it is probably part of the uh, splenic thrombosis, which um, are blood clots and they're extreme but that comes with pancreatic cancer. They've just never treated it because there were other things to be treated that were took precedence over it. So I'm just, I'm going, this just doesn't make sense. He says, I said, what about the liver? He says, yeah, nothing changed in the liver and there's nothing in the liver. It's, it looks clear. And I'm like, that's impossible. You know, I'm telling him, are you sure? You know, I, there were things in the liver before and he's like, no, you're looking like you're pretty stable and let's put you on some blood thinners to uh, start working on the, uh, on the uh, clots. So we leave and I, Matthew and I are talking, I'm like, and he's excited because, you know, if it's not, no, no change is a good thing. And I'm like, this makes no sense, no sense. And the questions I was asking, he wasn't answering correctly. No, something's off. I mean, it doesn't even sound like it was my scan. And uh, so we talked more and more and we're both like, this makes no sense. And it wasn't until about three o'clock in the afternoon that we got the results from our CT scan, my CT scan. And it's bad. Oh, I'm gonna start to cry again. Ah. <laughs> anyway. So we put out a call to the doctor and my, my other doctor, he's like the concierge doctor. And I said, you, you know, Matthew wrote uh, an email and says, this makes no sense. The information that, you know, my, the oncologist gave us does not coincide with what we just read from the CT scan. So we, he, he sent a, an email and he said, you know, you need to talk to the oncologist. You need to get you figure out what's going on because it, something's very wrong. And um, within whatever, half an hour, an hour, the oncologist calls and instantly, I am so sorry. The information I had apparently was inaccurate. Maybe they didn't have the, uh, the final CT results. And what they did is they just posted what was there from the last CT scan. And that's why nothing looks like it had changed. And I'm just like, wow okay and he apologized and he apologized and he apologized how could that have happened he apologized he apologized okay um 
So now for the CT scan, the results. Pretty sucky. And I, like I said, <laughs> we know our bodies. Pay attention to your bodies, everybody. That's my word to the wise here now. My lungs. Hello, lungs. Now they're affected. Uh, new irregular 11 millimeter basal lateral left lower lobe lung nodule. Great. Plus five new pro probable five millimeter nodules in the left lower lobe subpleural region. It's a little over my head, but I get it. It's all in my lungs. Two millimeter right lower lobe nodule. A four millimeter superior segment right lower lobe nodule, as well as additional micro nodules. Okay, that's my lung. Those are my lungs. My healthy lungs are no more healthy. My liver. It's it's a lot. I'm I'm not gonna go through all of it, but large probably aggregate mass at the junction of the segments six and seven, measuring 8.5 by 4.7, whereas it was three point or 7.3 by 4.0. So that went up um, centimeters. A new 15 millimeter segment with three metastases. Essentially new segment uh, eight, I, I'm not reading this right, but whatever, bear with me. <laughs> uh, eight 21 millimeter lesion. The entire right portal vein is not visible due to the tumor. Previously, only the posterior segment right lobe branch was effect effaced. Now the anterior segment branch is also effaced. The tumor invades the posterior wall of the gastric fundus with an enlarging, with an enlarging approximately 40, whereupon it was 23 millimeters. Um, Subserosal mass in this region. There are more masses. That's what I'm getting from all this confirmed. More masses, more masses. Uh, my spleen, direct invasion now by the pancreatic tumor, whereas before it was always it was always just abutting the the pancreas or the spleen. Now it's in the stomach. I've been in so much pain. <laughs> the stomach, the posterior wall. But I've cried so much today. I'm so over it. Okay. The posterior wall of the gastric fundus abuts the pancreatic tail neoplasm consistent with known invasion. The remainder of the stomach is normal, but it's now in the stomach. Of course it is. That's why I can't eat. That's why it hurts so freaking much. The pancreas. Locally invasive pancreatic tail mass measuring 5.3 by 4.0, where it was 4.9 .9 by 2.9. There's local extension into the inferior spleen. There's possible extension of the posterior wall of the stomach and possible extension to the ventral aspect of the superior pole of the kidney. The adrenals, <laughs> and it keeps going. The left adrenal gland is partially affected by the tumor. The right adrenal gland is normal. Yay for one of them. Kidneys, superior pole ventral aspect of the kidney is effaced by neoplasm. I don't know what that means. Who cares at this point? Um, okay. That's my news.
So when we woke up this morning, we both had the uh, this feeling that it was gonna be horrible. And then of course we get this news and it's not horrible, but it wasn't right. And then we get the right news and it's horrible. So after speaking with the doctor, he says it, it doesn't make any sense to stay on chemo because it's just not, <clears throat> it's, it's not working. It's just not working. And he doesn't recommend going back on the old chemo because that could literally just be a, it, it could have bad side effects. It could just not be a pleasant experience and it could do nothing. There aren't any other options. Um, you know, we could try other drugs, but see the pancreas is a hidden gem. Nobody knows how to cure pancreatic cancer. Nobody understands pancreatic cancer because it's so secretive. <clears throat> and so there just isn't enough information to uh, make a big change. And um, you know, <laughs> part of me is a little relieved just, just to know, because when I left the office this morning, I felt like I was completely un in the dark again. Like, so we're gonna, you're gonna send me to different doctors so they can start figuring out what might be wrong. And in the meantime, just stay in the pain that I'm in, you know, hoping for a good result. And the, the truth of the matter is, unfortunately, at this point in time, there is just not a cure for pancreatic cancer. Not even a cure, there isn't even, once it starts taking you, it, it it's, it's a downward, it's just a downward, spiral it just and you know what I'm I'm not okay with it but I'm okay with it I'm better now than being left in the dark and um, Matthew and I have been crying a lot today and Vaughn and Nico were over and uh, I, I FaceTimed Rachel at the exact same time and I had to explain to them what's going on That was hard. Um, <laughs> I'm saddest. for um, Matthew, my kids, and the kids. I'm a good wife. <laughs> I'm a really good wife. I'm a really good mom. And it sucks that... not to be able to be a great grandma to what sucks the most so <laughs> it's just it's pretty much confirmed <laughs> I'm just gonna ride this out you know he didn't want an answer what I want to do yes I can continue on yes I can keep trying things but even he even he knew. He said, take the weekend to think things over and, you know, let's talk more and, you know, and I don't know. Uh, um, this is really sad. This is really hard, everybody. We're all gonna die, yes. Of course we are. We've had this talk before. But to have a clear 
expiration date. <laughs> That's brutal. So I'm going to, um, Matthew's going to take this, you know, week off of work or whatever. And we're just going to put all the plans together. So there aren't any questions for when, you know, when the time comes that everything will just kind of be able to just be handled and dealt with. And, and in the meantime, um, I need to kiss as many animals as I can. And get as many hugs as I can. Damn. Um. I don't even know what to say. I am, for the first time, speechless. <laughs> I'll still vlog. I think it's important. I've done it since day two. I think it's important. <clears throat> so that's it for tonight. I, I just, I need to clear my head. I need to get a good night's sleep. I need to take drugs because now it really doesn't matter what I take. <laughs> I was so afraid. I'm to this day. I was to this moment. I was still. Oh, I don't want to take it. He's gonna hurt me. No, I'm so past that. <laughs> no, I'm. I'm being called over to another side. Big time. Big time. Wow. Wow. I'm. Uh, I'm gonna go with grace and dignity. <laughs> Don't listen to me. I just want to say I love you. I love me. And I have a big sense of relief. I do. I do. Um, I'm relieved on many levels. <laughs> now I can just think each step going forward rather than how am I going to feel tomorrow? How am I going to, is this working? Is it not working? What do I do? How do I No, It's like, okay, now I'm, I'm pretty clear in my head. So now I just need to, uh, make my days fabulous. And I appreciate you all. I will be back. I will be back. <laughs> on more, <laughs> on more levels than this. No, I'll keep vlogging. And, uh, I'll say goodnight. Mwah, and mwah, mwah. Talk to you later. <laughs>